Hello everyone and welcome back to another Brad Teaches video. Today I wanted to start a new series on showing some of the basics of how the different sections of blocks within Snap operate. And today I wanted to start with one of the most important section of blocks if you wanted to do anything involving maybe games or motion within Snap, which is the motion section. Some of the very first blocks that we're gonna look at within the motion tab are our simple move, turn, and point in direction tabs right here. So as you can see, I have a pretty basic sprite here on the right, and my move block allows me to put that sprite uh, 10 steps ahead in a particular direction. Now, of course, here it's really easy to tell with my sprite what direction that is because it points, but move 10 steps always goes in whatever your sprite's forward direction is. Uh, and we can change that forward direction with one of our turn or one of our uh, different directionary or degree blocks. Here I have turn clockwise 15 degrees. Let's say I wanted to do 45 degrees, which would be a little bit of half of the quarter of the screen, right? We can see I can do that. And once I hit that twice, we are now pointed downwards, which is 90 degrees and a 360 degree motion. Let's say that I wanted to do a specific angle rather than just adding on to whatever my angle is now. Well, I have the point and direction block right here, which allows me to do that. I can manipulate this little toggle right here to go all 360 degrees, or even better, I can type in and I can say, let's go somewhere at like 175. And when I click, you can see I go off just a little bit from where I'm at. But if I do 270, I'm now pointing in the left-hand direction. It's gonna be very useful when you wanna orientate in a specific direction every single time. In addition to being able to point in a specific amount of degrees, I can also point towards different objects. You see, I have the point towards block outside and right now the mouse pointer is selected. And anytime I click this, it goes towards where my mouse is on the screen, which can be useful if you have maybe the mouse pointer. So you wanna to point towards the user wherever their mouse is on the screen, if you're playing a game, or it might point towards a particular other sprite. In addition to pointing, we can also go to specific areas of the screen. So right now, let's say I want my sprite in the center with zero, zero, I can achieve that. But what if I wanna put my sprite a little bit to the right hand side and a little bit further up? You can see I can change that now and I can go to specific coordinates or of course later, uh, maybe coordinates I specify through a variable. We are able to go to different positions that maybe might be named. So a lot like how we had the point towards mouse pointer, here I now go towards my mouse pointer, but instead I'm gonna pick random position. And you can see now my sprite will go towards these different positions on screen, which can be nice for a little bit of randomization. The blocks that we just looked at will move our sprite instantly to the place that we have specified. In the case of this block right here, go to random that I just showed, uh, we go pretty much instantly to any spot on a canvas. But what if I want to do that in a specific time frame, or I want to do that maybe smooth or even slow? Here you can see that I can set a number of seconds to take my sprite to get to a location. So if I move my sprite maybe right here to the corner and I want it to go to the center, I can click and you'll see my sprite slowly moves to that location. Now you might wonder why we have a block called change x by 10 when we already have a way of moving that block and we already have a go-to block. This makes sense if you wanna change uh, in a specific manner on a specific plane. So maybe you have a game that is more of a side scroller. So something like Mario, where Mario is really moving more so left to right than he is up and down, unless he's jumping, the change X by 10 allows me to keep that behavior pretty easy. And the nice part about that is that it doesn't matter what way my character is or my sprite is oriented, it'll always move just in X rather than maybe diagonal, right? So here you can see my sprite is turned. I'm going to make my sprite turn even a little bit more, but change, by, change X by 10 is always gonna move it just left to right, whether I have a positive or a negative number. We can change X by a specific amount, but we can also just set it directly a lot like our previous block, the go to X and Y zero. Set X to zero will always move our sprite to the same X coordinate, but it'll keep its Y coordinate the same. 
It's very nice if you want to keep it focused and you know that your character is only going to move in the X direction. We have very similar to blocks to what I just showed with changing X and setting X. And we can do the same thing here with Y. So you can see I have the change Y by 10, which will always move my sprite up or down based off wherever it is or whatever direction it is pointed in. I also have set Y to a particular coordinate, which again, doesn't matter where the X is, it's always gonna change just the Y. Finally, I have a block down here, which is a little bit harder to show if the sprite isn't directly moving. And so I'm gonna use a forever block over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and set the if on edge bounce, but I also need to be able to move my sprite. And so I'm gonna take one of the things that we just saw, which is move 10 steps, which is gonna move my sprite in any direction that it's pointed. So if I click on forever, if you take note of where my sprite's pointed right now, you can see it is moving and it is always going to bounce off the walls. However, if I were to take the if on edge bounce block out of that, and I was gonna go ahead and start my forever loop, you're gonna see that the sprite quickly disappears and we probably don't know where it's gonna end up. It probably has a really high Y coordinate and a really high X coordinate. Matter of fact, we can actually see those coordinates by pulling out some of our definition blocks right here. So I can no longer see my sprite, I've stopped my script, but if I wanna click and show my X and Y position and the direction, you can see just how far my sprite actually is and the direction it's pointed in. And if you click over here, we can see that reported right there in the screen and we can later access that as a variable if we so want to. Of course, you can always make your own blocks for motion, but uh, that takes us through the end of all of our motion blocks um, and some of the most useful that we're gonna use if we ever come to creating a video game or use sprites on the screen to show off maybe some graphic user information or if we start using uh, our pen blocks like I'll show in another video. But I just wanna thank you all for watching um, and please, I'll see you again on the next video.